great. Oh, jeez. How am I going to get through this video? I don't. That hurts so bad. Quick unrelated tangent. Can you survive without both kidneys? <laughs> Because today I'm back with a review of the most expensive microphone I will likely ever be able to review. And I don't have any more kidneys either. The microphone that we're reviewing today is the Neumann U67 reissue, which is a tube microphone. If you are interested in this mic, it will cost you $7,225 before taxes. This is one of the few cases where I will say, please, if you're buying this, please use the affiliate link in the description. I am never going to financially recover from this. I know it's ridiculous, but for the majority of this review and to remain consistent from video to video, I'll be running this into the Focusrite 18i 22nd gen. My gain is set at around 1230. I will not do any kind of post processing, but I may have to boost it a little bit in post. So check the doobly-doo to see what I diddly did. And a little bit later, I will be running it through different interfaces as well as different external preamps. Now let's talk about what comes in the box or the suitcase, but I can't throw that because I'll break everything, so we have a stand-in box. First up, you are going to get this great looking suitcase that has a nice U67 badge on it, and when you open it up, it has storage locations for all of the accoutrements that come with the microphone. Then you are going to get the microphone. You'll get this shock mount, a 5 8 to 3 8 inch microphone stand adapter, a 10 meter 7 pin cable to connect the microphone to the power supply, the power supply as well as the cable to power the power supply, and a little bit of documentation. Then as far as the build quality, I don't have any complaints about this thing and I better not given the price tag. It does have an all metal body, it has a metal mesh grill which I'm not going to press because it will dent. On the front you have a three way selector switch to switch between the three polar patterns omnidirectional, cardioid, or figure eight. On the rear, you'll find two additional switches, the first one being a negative 10 decibel pad, the second one being a high pass filter, which we will test a little bit later. As we move around the body of the microphone, there are no other switches, but on the bottom, you will find the seven pin XLR port to connect this to the power supply. Speaking of the power supply, unlike some others that I've used, this one feels outstanding. It has a very durable, all-metal build quality. The switch on it feels amazing and sounds great too. And none of the ports, whether it be the 7-pin, the 3-pin XLR, or the power supply port, have any excessive wiggle or wobble to them. And lastly, if manufacturing location matters to you, this microphone is made in Germany. Then as far as the specs, this microphone has an omnidirectional, a cardioid, and a figure eight polar pattern, a frequency response of 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz, a sensitivity of approximately negative 35, negative 31, and negative 36 dB respectively, a self noise of 21 dBA, 17 dBA, and 20 dBA respectively, a max SPL of 114 dB or 124 dB with the pad engaged, and an impedance of 200 ohms. Now, like a complete and utter psychopath, I am hand holding the U67 while it's on the cardioid mode. I will rotate around to 90 degrees so you can hear the off axis rejection and coloration. Continuing around to 180 degrees so you can hear the rear of the mic. Moving to the second 90 degree angle, there you go. And then rotating and ending at the front of the microphone. Now on the omnidirectional mode, I'll move around and you shouldn't hear a massive change or drop off in tone as we move all the way around the microphone and we end at the front of the 67. And finally, we're on figure eight, and we will rotate around to 90 degrees so you can hear the dead area of the mic. Continuing around to 180 degrees, here's how the second lobe of sensitivity sounds. Continue rotating around to the second dead area, and finally rotating and ending at the front of the mic. Now normally right here, I would include a plosive test, but I do not want to damage this microphone, so I'm just going to do the test with a pop filter because you'll likely be using one if you buy this microphone. Please bring pizza pronto. Please bring pizza pronto. Please bring pizza pronto. Now I'm right on top of the U67 to demonstrate the proximity effect on this thing. Now I'm about three inches off with the mic pointed to the corner of my mouth, and here is how it's sounding. 
about one foot away from the microphone, two feet away from the microphone, and about four feet away from the U67 reissue. Now I am typing on a keyboard with Gatoron Blue switches to see how much of my voice versus how much of the keyboard it picks up. And for the Game & Folk, I am typing on the SAD W and spacebar keys. Now here is how the microphone sounds in a well-treated room on the cardioid polar pattern. And here is how the microphone sounds in a completely untreated room on the cardioid polar pattern. And now because you are going to be stuck with the provided shock mount, let's see how effective it is. I'll start by tapping on my desk to see how much of that noise it can reject. And then I will tap on the boom arm. And now because I'm annoying and I want to be thorough, I will tap on the body of the microphone to see if there are any kind of resonant frequencies. Once again, I'm right on top of the microphone to really accentuate that proximity effect. The microphone is currently in the flat mode, and here is how it's sounding. And now I've engaged the high-pass filter on the microphone, and you can hear that it really cleans up a lot of the low end. And if I'm not mistaken, this was the first microphone to have an inbuilt high-pass filter for close miking applications. There you go, that's how it sounds. Now, in order to see how this microphone will perform running through a better interface with better preamps and better analog to digital converters, I'm running the mic into a mic splitter. I'm running one of the outputs to the Focusrite 18i20 and the second output to the Universal Audio X8. The Focusrite is set at 1230. The gain on the X8 is set at 32 decibels, both recording 24-bit 48 kilohertz. And I've level matched them as close as I can, but I will do a little bit of adjustment in post to make sure they're exactly right. And throughout this entire explanation, I will have been switching back and forth, so you should be able to get a pretty good understanding of how the microphone performs running through an entry-level audio interface and a professional-level audio interface. Now I want to do a couple quick comparisons between the mic running direct into an interface and then running through an outboard preamp. So first up, I have the mic running through that mic splitter, one output direct into the X8. The second output is currently running through the LA610, which is a tube preamp. I have the gain set to plus 10, so we're getting as much tube coloration as we can. The level is then set at 3.5, and I am running that line level into the Universal Audio X8, so we are getting the exact same A to D conversion. We are just switching out the preamps that are being used, and I will have been switching back and forth throughout this entire explanation, so you can hear how a tube mic sounds running into a tube preamp compared to an audio interface. There you go. Now we're doing the exact same test, but with a different preamp, so you can hear another example. The second pre that I wanted to demonstrate is the Rupert Neve Designs Portico 5017. Gain is set to 42 dB, silk circuit engaged, no compressor, running line into the X8. I have level matched them as close as I can, and I will be switching back and forth between these, so you can hear how it performs running direct into the Universal Audio X8 Pre and A to D converter, versus running through an outboard preamp, then into the A to D converter. There you go. Now, like we always do, we're going to do a quick spoken word comparison between the microphone that we're reviewing and a bunch of other microphones that are available so we can see how it stacks up against the competition. Like always, we'll start on the mic that we're reviewing. This is the U67. I am six inches off. My gain is set at 1230, and here's how it's sounding. First up, we are on the Neewer NW700. This is a $25 microphone. I am six inches off. My gain is at 1230. And this is a very loud microphone. Let's jump back to the U67 and do more comparisons. Back again on the U67 so you can hear this before we jump to a second microphone. Now I'm on the Audio-Technica AT2020. I am six inches off. My gain is still at 1230 and here is how this sounds. 
This is a $100 cardioid only solid state condenser microphone. There you go. Let's jump to another one. In order to cleanse your palate, we are back on the U67 so you can hear this before we jump to a third microphone. Now we are on the Lewitt LCT440 Pure. This is a $270 cardioid only solid state condenser microphone. I am six inches off. My gain is still at 1230. Check the lower third to see how much I boost each of these in post. And there is how it sounds. Let's jump back and do some more comparisons. I don't know if you were expecting it, but again, we're back on the U67. Nothing has changed. Here's how it's sounding. Let's jump to another mic. Now we are on one of my all-time favorite microphones, the Rode NT1. I am six inches off. My gain is at 1230. This is another cardioid-only condenser microphone, which costs $270. And here's how it sounds. Let's jump back to the Neumann. All righty, we are back on the U67 for a fifth time, I think. Here is how it's sounding. Same distance, same gain setting. Let's jump to a fifth microphone. Now, for no other reason other than I can, I am on the Shure SM7B. This is a $400 dynamic cardioid-only microphone. I am six inches off of the capsule. 48 volts is off. My gain is at 100%. Flat mode on the microphone. And here is how this sounds compared to a $7,225 tube condenser multi-pattern microphone. It's not a fair comparison at all, but there you go. All right, we are back on the U67 again, so you can hear how this sounds. Same distance, same gain setting. Let's do another test. Next, because I wanted to include all of the Neumann microphones that I have, I am on the KMS-105. This is a $700 handheld condenser microphone. I am about six inches off of this. My gain is set at three o'clock, 48 volts phantom power on and here is how it sounds. Let's jump back to the U67 and do a bunch more comparisons. Just to cleanse your palate, this is the U67 again. Get a good feel for it. Listen to how it sounds on my voice, and let's jump to the next microphone. Now I'm on Neumann's most affordable studio condenser microphone, the TLM-102. This costs $700, cardioid only, solid state. Six inches off, my gain is at 130, and here's how it sounds. Let's jump back to the U67. I don't know if I need to say this, but you should be listening with headphones to all of this review because that's how you get the best out of it. But we're on the U67. Here's how it sounds. Let's jump to another microphone. Now I am on a clone of the U67, which is the Warm Audio WA67. This costs $900. It is another multi-pattern tube condenser microphone cardioid mode six inches off my gain is at 12:30, and here's how a clone of the 67 sounds compared to the actual thing okay next microphone we are back on the u67 again and i do kind of love the idea of somebody listening to a u67 review and comparison on phone speakers it's kind of funny to me let's go to the next mic now I am on one of Neumann's most popular microphones, the TLM-103. I am six inches off. My gain is set at around 1230. This costs $1,100 and it is another cardioid only solid state microphone. And here's how it's sounding. Let's jump back to the 67. All right, we are getting near the end, but before we jump to the next mic, we are on the U67 again, so you can hear how it sounds. Let's jump to the next one. Now I am on the TLM-47, six inches away with my gain at two o'clock. This microphone costs around $1,700, and this is emulating a 47-style microphone. There you go, Transformerless 47 versus a Tube U67. Let's do some more comparisons. And I believe we have two more to go, but before we get to them, we are back on the U67. Nothing has changed. Let's jump to the 11th microphone. Now I am on the Telefunken TF-47, which is another multi-pattern tube condenser microphone. This costs around $1,900. I am six inches off with my gain at 130, and here's how it's sounding. Let's jump back to the U67 and do one more, one more comparison. And we are wrapping up on the final microphone, and you all know what it's going to be, but first up, U67, here is how it sounds. Let's jump to the last one. And finally, we are on the U67, which is a multi-pattern condenser microphone, 
cardioid mode, no filters engaged. This costs $3,600, so half the price of the U67, and it uses the exact same capsule. So you tell me, which of these microphones do you like the best, and do you think the U67 sounds two times better than the U87 AI, to be clear? This is the AI, not a vintage. Okay, that's the microphone comparison. Now let's jump to the music test. I bought a $7,000 mic, I don't know what to do, I don't know what to do, won't you tell me now? Should I buy another mic, or should I call it quits? Cause I don't have the money to keep doing this. Now clearly I'm not going to quit, I I spent $7,000 to make a video. But the question is, where do I go from here? The next logical point is Elam 251, but who has $10,000 to spend on a microphone to make one video? I I don't. I'm not Mr. Beast. So Telefunken, hit me up. (laughs) Let's work something out because I want to review that microphone. It sounds really good. Thanks. Conclusion time. (laughs) Okay. It's a really good microphone. It's it's a great microphone. It may be my all-time favorite microphone. I I don't know what else to say. (laughs) But first up, as far as pros, it has to be the sound quality of this microphone. It offers this amazing detailed sound, but it somehow avoids any harshness or sibilance in the top end, and it just creates this beautiful, wonderful sound that is very hard to come by. Also, I found the off-axis coloration of this thing to be really outstanding, so you're going to be able to capture a bit more of the room from the sides and the rear without that making the recording sound funky, and the accessories are all extremely well built, and they perform their function really well. But then as far as cons, I try not to say this, but the price. It is extremely expensive. $7,225 is an ungodly amount of money to spend on a microphone, and that is the main drawback of this thing. But when we look at the actual performance of the microphone, I do think that the 17 to 21 dBA self noise is a little bit high for the modern era because nowadays you have extremely low self noise solid state microphones. For a tube mic, 17 to 21 dBA is pretty darn respectable, but in the modern era, some folks might run into an issue with that. And the other con is the max SPL of the microphone. A lot of modern mics handle insane SPLs up to 140 dB and higher. This maxes out at 114 to 124 dB. A lot of us won't hit that, but if you're dealing with extremely loud sound sources, that may actually come into play and become an issue. And now, what are my overall thoughts and opinions of this microphone? On the electric guitar, take my opinion and my recordings with a grain of salt, because I'm working in the box of doom, and there is very minimal space to maneuver. I wasn't able to get the best positioning with this microphone, so it's not the best representation of the sound I would want. But with the sound I was able to get, I found the low end to be nicely controlled, the mids were nice and smooth and pleasing, and then the top end was detailed, and it captured all of that information, but it avoided any kind of sizzliness or fizziness. It was a really nice sounding top end. Then on the acoustic guitar, I found it to be very full-bodied sounding. The low mids were also really robust, and you have this really nice smooth midsection, And then the top end comes across quite tame. It's not an overly bright sound, but it doesn't lose any of the articulation, 
or the attack on the strings. Really nice if you want a little bit of a darker sound. Next up for singing, I absolutely loved it for this application. If I could describe it in one word, I would say gooey. It sounds so incredibly good on singing. The lows get out of the way, but it doesn't come across as anemic. You do get a full-bodied low mid section. Then the mids in general are smooth, clear, no issues there whatsoever, not overly nasally, not scooped sounding. And then the top end, you avoid any kind of harshness, any kind of sibilance, but you don't lose any of the detail. You have all of it. It's pleasing. It's airy. It's... It's just amazing on singing vocals. I really, really loved it here. And lastly, for spoken word, I know it's overkill. I know nobody's going to be using it for that, but I love it for this application. The tone is insane. It tames the low end in a very pleasing way, but if you want to get a little bit more of that, you can eat it and get this insane body to it, this insane, wonderful sound. The mids on this do come across slightly more forward than a lot of modern microphones, but I wouldn't classify it as a very mid-forward microphone, and it is a very inoffensive midsection. As I said, it's not nasally, it's not scooped, it is just a very nice and even midsection is how I would classify it. And lastly, in the top end, I know I sound like a broken record, but you maintain all of that information, you have all of that detail, but it avoids any kind of sibilance or harshness, and for long listening sessions, that makes this thing awesome. And to wrap up, would I recommend the Neumann U67 reissue? In very rare cases. First, let's address, is a $7,225 microphone worth it? No, absolutely not, it is not worth it. But at the same time, absolutely, it's worth every freaking penny. It's amazing and I love it with all of my being, so yes, it's worth the money. But who would I recommend this microphone for? If you're somebody who earns a boatload of money making music and you want that U67 sound, absolutely, I would recommend it because it sounds amazing, it's undeniable. It is an amazing sounding microphone. It's one of my all-time favorites, if not my all-time favorite. It may have unseated the SM7B. I'm not willing to say that, but <laughs> it may have. But on the other hand, $7,000 is a lot of money. You could buy an entire microphone locker for the price of this one microphone. You could buy a car for the price of this microphone. You could get a U87, an RE20, an SM7B, an Austrian Audio OC818, a AEA KU5A, a Bayer Dynamic M160, and then you could probably still eat for a month. You might even be able to pay your rent, depending on where you live. So you are really going to have to want this microphone to spend $7,225 plus tax to get it. But to sound a little bit vulgar, if you love the sound of this microphone, if it's the sound you've been looking for, and you have the disposable income to buy it, I think that it's worth every single penny. Or, may or maybe I'm just trying to convince myself that it's worth every penny. I can say that I don't regret buying it. It's one of my all-time favorite, if not my new all-time favorite microphone. All right, I think that's gonna wrap up for the most expensive video that I likely will ever make. I will never financially recover from this. There's no way I'm making enough money to pay for the microphone that I bought to make this video. What a stupid business decision. But let me know what you thought of this microphone in the comments down below. Which microphone did you like the best in the voiceover comparison? And would you rather have the U67 or an entire microphone locker or maybe a used car? Tell me that in the comments down below. If you found this video fun, interesting, or helpful, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. If you hated it, give me a big old thumbs down. If you want more videos, go ahead and subscribe. Click that logo down beneath me. You can hang out in a Discord server where we talk about audio gear all day long, podcastage.com slash Discord. If you want to support the channel, please consider using the affiliate links in any of the descriptions for my videos so I might be able to financially recover from this. But if you want to support in an even bigger way and become one of these amazing people over here, you can do so by clicking that join button or going to patreon.com slash podcastage and joining at the $5 tier or higher. It really truly does help me continue to bring you these videos 
like the U67 reissue review. So until next time, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for listening. I will talk to you on a later date. Bye-bye.